I recently visited Physiologic here on the Gold Coast to have a respiratory rate test done to see how my ageing metabolism was faring. All the results and how they can benefit your training up next on Guy's Garage. After the testing was complete, I went back into Physiologic and sat down with Josh Meyer and David Coombs to go over the data and actually find out what all this respiratory rate testing was all about. Yeah. Well, one, one thing to remember with this test is it's not just a VO2 max test. It doesn't just measure that one yep. thing. Yep. It gives you a full, it's a metabolic efficiency test. And so that's what we're all about really. Yeah, it testing. gives you a, a full um, picture of your resting yep. and your exercise yep. metabolism. So this, what that really means in practice is how well does your body burn different fuels such yeah. as carbohydrates and fats. Yeah, um, that's a bit I'm excited. Yeah, about. at what at what heart rates should you then be targeting your training? So we can get to the um, the nuts and bolts, you know, that it, and it doesn't matter whether you're, you know, um, just first getting up off the couch or you're a lifetime athlete. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. But it's just targeted. It's specific targeted to specifically that individual. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Right. And that's so, actually where we've seen the biggest bang for buck in this testing and the results of the, the, the individuals who just want to change their lives. Um, we're seeing massive yeah, improvements yeah. off the back of just suggestions. And having that information, there's no, there's no, you know, that's, yeah. there's no loss in that, is no, it? No, I mean, the athletes who get tested might, um, will improve their uh, performance, but the sorts of margins, you know, they're after the edge, edge yeah, yeah. whereas we can see great results in um, um, sedentary people. This is your, that's your exercise test data. Okay. So we've got the graph there which has your overall fuel burning profile. So along the bottom there, you've got your heart rate. Yep. Obviously, as your exercise intensity increases, your heart rate goes up. Mm. And as your exercise intensity increases, your overall use of calories increases. So you basically burn more calories the harder you work. Yes. Okay, that's yep. in yep. a nutshell. So that's your high intensity training that everyone's talking about these days, going to the gym and doing those HIIT workouts. But when you're doing a HIIT workout, the, the, the upshot of a HIIT workout is that you're basically burning a lot of calories. Yes. Yeah, that's... But yeah. It's, just, it's only for a short amount of time, obviously, because you can only sustain mm. that effort. It's a short amount of time, and, the, and what you're actually burning in terms of calories during that workout is um, will be a combination of fats and carbohydrates, and yep. depending how hard you're working, can be more of a can be more carbohydrates and more fat. So if your end goal is is fat loss, you're going to be better off back in this fat. fat There's fat a couple of parts to that, but yeah, we'll we'll talk in more detail about sure. the implications of that for yourself, but then also for someone who's perhaps more of a, a sedentary person. So it's interesting to see the fat the fat burning curve quite flat until until you get to a certain number one. Yeah. Yeah, so what what the what we want to see with a healthy fat burning um, profile during exercise is a nice wide, tall line. Right. Okay, so we want to be burning fats for a long time, which yep. means that you're still able to burn fats at these higher heart rates. Yes, we don't want to see this curve fall to zero too early. Too early. Yep. Now it will eventually fall to zero. Yep. The reason for that is that it's harder for your body to burn fats, it takes a little bit longer and it tends to, to, to access those. It's a faster burning fuel load. And that's when your carbohydrate kicks in. So, so what, very, then, very high intensities, you get, you, it will be 100% carb. carb. All right, very interesting stuff. I'm gonna try and break it down really simply uh, for those guys following along at home. So essentially, the good news is, if you're just trying to lose a bit of weight, uh, if you've been you know, out of shape, you don't have to go flat out to metabolize fat. So you'll see on the chart, and I'll put that up again, but as your heart rate increases to a certain point, you've got a flat curve with uh, using fat and carbohydrates as an energy supply, and as you get uh, a higher heart rate and the, the performance is, is, has a high demand, the uh, curve, the carbohydrate curve climbs, and the fat burning or fat fuel as a fuel source drops off. So what you're doing, if you want to target fat burning, obviously you need to be back in that efficient fat burning zone. You'll see on my other chart there, and I'll put that up now, is uh, you know around that 124 to 135, so average of 129 heart rate. Um, so 60 to 
of my VO2 max, which we'll, we'll talk about later, but um, it, uh, it's my most efficient zone, so 38 and a half grams of fat per hour I'm metabolizing at that zone, in that zone. So, you know, I want to lose a little bit of weight, um, so I want to target that fat burning zone. So that's, that's me, I uh, do the majority of that training in that zone. If you're um, just trying to lose weight, same thing, you don't have to go flat out. High intensity workouts are popular and they're great, they burn a lot of calories, but you can see how, in, you can see on that chart how they burn a lot of carbohydrates and less fat. So if you want some actual fat metabolizing um, workouts, you don't have to go as hard. So uh, as a guy said there, a little bit of, little bit of both is great. Um, also, uh, if you're an endurance athlete, you want to become more efficient in that zone, in that zone where you're burning fat because the carbohydrates stored in the body eventually run out and you need to try and uh, burn as much fat at as high as uh, producing as much performance as you can. So that's the whole idea about um, endurance training. You want to move that curve sideways and actually for that same given uh, heart rate and fat expenditure, fat burning and less carb burning, you want to produce more watts or produce more power or speed uh, for your events so you become more efficient, last longer on the same amount of carbohydrate stores. So interesting, let's go back and, and chat to the guys about you know how to apply all this knowledge that we've got now. Yeah, so other things we can take away from this, the um, we talked right at the beginning about VO2 max and what that actually is, like your body's ability to use oxygen. oxygen. Yeah. And um, the formula for the, the um, uh, formula for VO2 max is how much oxygen you're using in milliliters yeah. per minute. Yes. So your absolute level here is 4,340. Milliliters, yep. Yeah, but the VO2 max that everybody talks about is relative, relative to their body weight. weight. Yeah. All right, so there's a body weight component to that yep. as well. So if we were to have a VO2 max, we could have exactly the same absolute, mm. but a slightly lighter body weight, mm. which is what you were talking about. Yeah, with, yeah, with, and with, actually get a better result. Then you'd actually have a higher I mean, I was, relative when I got the two. higher number when I was 21, I was 75. Yeah, it's going to say, what was that in your race? 75, yeah. 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 So, and to be honest, so it's it's um, if, you, yeah. if you lost, well, I mean, it's arguable, if you, if you say you lost five kilos of body fat, yeah. Um, and this didn't change, yeah. then that gets better. So what I'm saying is your yeah. absolute mils per minute doesn't change, but then your body weight, then it goes up. Around, yeah. But it's highly likely also with um, the right type of training that your ability to consume oxygen increases slightly. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, you're, you're trying, trying to hit it from both around. angles. Yeah. You're trying to go from... Is um, that in red because it's bad? <laughs> no, mate, you're, you're, you're okay. You, you, 90 to 94. 94 I, think, so I, 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 I got good well, enough. I got 100. I got 95. Yeah, yeah, you can bet. I got 95. Did you hear? I just for like that's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were paddling. Uh, so um, yeah, that's I'm pretty much. I'm gonna start hanging around average people a bit more often. <laughs> hanging around these elite athletes make you feel better. Oh, don't tell them he's the elite athlete. Oh, no, mate, my head's swelling. <laughs> <laughs> So that's great. I, I, that's super interesting, and I'm going to pull, look over this very closely more. Is there any key things that I need to know before we move the, on? To the key thing to take away from this is you you now know your exact training thresholds. Yep. So that's that's really important. Yeah. We are going to want to be doing um, some VO two max work to try and get this absolute up. Yep. So what that means is doing some really high intensity stuff. And that will help push the absolute up. Yeah, we want to try and, you know, that's that's your really, really hard efforts. You know, you're talking about stuff that's you, around about that three minute yeah. mark just that low or under like two to three minute recovery time. really high intensity, yeah. you know, yeah. the hardest you can go. Smash it out. Yeah. And, then, and, then every, and then supporting and then that with aerobic supporting stuff. Supporting that with the aerobic stuff and you've now got an idea of where that aerobic... I guess the magic is um, is working out taking the science and then the application of yes. the science. Yeah. I mean, effectively. All right, there you have it. Some really uh, valuable information and data there from the guys at Physiologic, Josh and David. Uh, yeah, they, they put it in, in really simple terms. So uh, just looking again at my VO2, which was quite interesting, um, good for my age. There's a little chart there, that, you know, it, it, uh, even though it has gone down over the years uh, from when I was younger, it's still in a good percentage in terms of age group racing. So that's good news for me. Um, just good to know all this stuff. Don't know what, should, what I'd do if it wasn't good, I'd be sad. But you know, it's always um, ways to improve it, as, as Dave was saying. 
um, you know, some high intensity interval work uh, and we know exactly how hard to go. And we'll pull up that chart there. Um, and it, it, you know, we can go and, and, and increase that, um, that VO2 absolute factor by doing some high intensity work. The big thing for me is uh, personally losing some weight. Um, you know, I've got 11 kilos of body fat. I'm probably a good oh, seven kilos heavier than when I was at my best race weight, albeit, you know, had a lot less, less things to do. Other, I, I was just training professional athletes. So um, uh, easier said than done when you get a little bit older, but uh, you know, I'll definitely tidy up the diet. On diet, the guys also were looking at my report and um, my metabolism was a little low. So probably almost, um, slowing my metabolism down by not having enough to eat and then not fueling my workouts well enough as well. So it's sort of a catch-22. So I'm going to start eating a little more, which is going to be interesting. Hopefully I don't put on weight. Um, I don't mind if I put on some muscle weight, but I do want to lose some fat weight. So um, I'm going to uh, use this information and this data, train for a little while, uh, retest my fitness, and then also uh, go back and get a DEXA scan and see if, if there's any weight, any fat loss as well, and any muscle gain. But uh, some... Fantastic information there uh, from uh, Physiologic. So I'm going to put in the description how you can get your uh, uh, respiratory test done as well. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, very valuable information, especially whether you're a sedentary person trying to get off the couch and just just get a little bit fitter, lose some weight, or whether you're an endurance athlete or an athlete of any type and you want to um, you want to try and train more effectively. Uh, it's always great to have this kind of data. <laughs>